Hello. I would like to show you how I approach any detailing that is so complex assigned to me. For example, what you're looking at is the uh, level zero foundation on uh, performing and media arts project that we have. I've done the north side matte foundation is shown here. Okay. And some people are assigned the column pads already. I also have done, uh, let's see, I've done uh, area B matte foundation also. On area B, it's, this is about seven tons, while uh, on area A, this area is uh, about 42 tons. Okay. Now I could see that what is left behind on A and B are a little bit more complex because all the shear wall foundation is going all over like this. It's gone here. So I think uh, the next view might show it a little better, like this one. So now I need to be able to do these areas. So I'm going to. You could see all of a sudden it looks a little bit more complex um, and a complex task is a little bit overwhelming but what I do when I get something like this I simplify the work by zooming on its parts I divide them into smaller parts and I detail those smaller parts for example, I could see that I could uh, work on this little area here. So what I will do, I will zoom in. So the trick is zooming in and simplifying it. So I'll zoom into that, that one. So I'm going to do that. This is all I'm going to do. So I'll do this foundation. And I, won't, I will just concentrate on this foundation without thinking of that. Now going back. I could look at all the detail and see what are the things that are involved. For example, if I look at the section, there's this section 7 on S501B. I go to that section. This is what it shows. Now I could zoom into this. It tells me the longitudinal part at, on the top of the foundation goes straight into this step pudding, but doesn't bend. The top bar doesn't bend. But on the other end, it will bend. The bottom bar bends at one end and goes all the way here and bends up also. Foundation, which I already did, and I got those details already. So these are that area. That's already detailed. When I detailed them, I got all the bars except the diagonal. I did not include the diagonal on this mud foundation because I know that those diagonals belong to this, which is the lower portions. So I'm already thinking that they're going to ask for this shear wall foundation before they ask for that, this mud foundation. So all these diagonals will have to come from here. Okay, that's, that's what I got. Now I see that the transverse bars for the shear wall foundation begins one bar inside the mat foundation and going, going south. But at the bottom, you have several more bars inside. They show on the section a 12 inch spacing, but in reality, according to the schedule, this shear wall foundation has transverse bars at six inches on center. So the step is minimum three feet. So every time I step, I go three feet and whatever the elevation they give me. So I know this is one detail. So to go back uh, to, so I, that's the detail there. Here, there is a step also. There's a step here, and then there's a step there, and then there's a step there. So I look at all those sections. I look at all these things, like there's a section there, 
Okay, I look it up and see what is involved. The Shiro Foundation is called out as WF8. I need to know what's in that uh, schedule, so I go to. Um, there you go. Here is the schedule and the section. WF8 shows the longitudinal bars are number 6 at 12 at the top, number 6 at 12 at the bottom. The transverse are both number 8 at 6 on top and at the bottom. The drawing, this is the section on the wall. Here's the mat foundation, and here are the, slab, the wall dowels. You notice there's no slab dowels. So this is the section. Now that I know all this, now I know how to detail those foundations. Now let me get this out of the way. Bring it back in this other side to do it. There you go. So I'll make my layout. And what I do, I'm just going to do the rebar for the shear wall along line. Along line two. Okay. I got a section A, which is this. I get the top longitudinal bar going into the step and bending on the left side. I get the bottom all the way to the step, bending on both ends. And then I have these diagonal bars at six inches from center. Those I, I will detail like that. And then I have a section view that shows the, uh, and shows the standee. So the section view allows me to indicate all the bars on my bar list. And then the plan view, of course, will be uh, see, plan view, on my plan view, all I care about are the main reinforcing, the reinforcing that goes in the staff, I do not show it on my plan view. For example, here, my longitudinal bars, I have 14, 6 CO7 at 12 inches top, 14, 6 CO8 at 12. So that took care of all the longitudinal. You notice I'm only using one line, because having two lines will make it more crowded. On the transverse, I also have one line. And you will notice on the transverse, I have 65 for the top, but 70 at the bottom. I call it top, it should be bottom. So the bottom is, there's only 70, 70 at the bottom, 65 only at the top, which is demonstrated by the section. You see the section, the bottom bars has more bars than the top. The bottom bars on the map on this has already been detailed. That is why on my transverse in the plan view, I show more bars. And I show the limit is longer from here to there. And then I will show through scale the dowels. And I will call out the dowels. I'll call out the dowel. 49, mark 6, 11, the old dowels at 9 inches each face. So I got the longitudinal, I got the transverse, I got the dowels. How about the column paths? Somebody's working on the column paths. Whatever they detail on the column paths can go into my uh, uh, wall foundation. Now, near the south end, the transverse bars for the shear wall is a little bit longer. It goes all the way to the step. Here I have eight top bars, 
and eight bottom bars. They're both the same. But on the top bar, the bend is on this end. There's no bend at the step. But at the bottom, the bend is the same way. Both bends are on this side. Here, on the next one, I, let's see, uh, okay, this one, both are bending, let's see, both are bending on this end. The HCO3 bends on, I take it back, HCO3 bends on both ends. Uh, we, we could check that with my, uh, with my uh, detailing on Series 97. But this, this portion, the longer one, which is from here to here, the bends are the same HCO4, 6, top and bottom. All the bends are on this end. There's no bend at the uh, step on this side. And then once again, at this one from here to here, the top bends here, the bottom bends both sides. And so let's see if that, that works. So that's how I do it. See, all of a sudden, I'm done. And I'm done. In, I got the detailing, detailing done in an hour, and I got about an hour and a half to do my CAD. Now all I have to do is, after I finish this one, I go to this little section, then to this little section, and then this little section, and this little. And slowly, I'm building up my plan view. If I have an app, then I submit it. I may submit half of the original plan view or the entire uh, area A. But I simplify it by first zooming into the plan view and, and doing each wall foundation separately. If you do it that way, you're not overwhelmed by all the details. You're only concentrating one wall at a time. See, that's the way to speed it up. Because if you overwhelm yourself, you won't be able to detail and meet your average of one ton an hour. Remember, we're asking for about a ton an hour. So, see, so yeah. this portion was 42 tons. This portion that we just did is about 8 tons. And the math foundation on area B, which is this, is about 17 tons. Looking at the my detailing, in shear 97, what we just completed is here. See, I got all the transverse first. Hmm. Second uh, transverse, the second set of transverse, HCO2, which is bent only on one end, is at the bottom. HCO3 is at the top, so I, I haven't uh, properly uh, called it out on the drawing. Uh, the, sec the third set is both HCO4 top and bottom, and the last set is HCO5 at the bottom, then both ends, and HCO6, so you could see that. See, I know my detailing is always correct. It's in the CAD that I'm going by what this shows, you know. So I detail it first, and then I do 
the drawings later. And you notice, to guide me on the drawing, I will say, mark WF8 along line 2, the wall foundation along line 2 from C to D4, C section 1, 4, S501. That shows the schedule and the section. And there is my detailing. And then I have C, A, F, F, S, X. That's my the, the placing drawing. And B, and the placing drawing also. Here I have the diagonals both <laughs> the same. Half is on the top, half is on the bottom. So 50, 56. So there was 28 at the top, 28 at the bottom. Mark, I showed it. That's the diagonal. The wall dowels, 9, 8, 9, 6 wall dowels. So, so 49 at 9 each face. The standee. So if you look at all these, all these marks are in the drawing. So it took me only less than an hour to detail, about an hour and a half to cut. So, that, so let's say I have three hours on this thing, and this thing is, according to the weight, is eight tons. Eight tons, three hours. I had 2.67 tons per hour, better than the average one ton per hour. The area B, my foundation, had 17 tons, and it only took me practically a day to both detail and do the CAD. So the 17 tons, 16, uh, 8 hours, say 8 hours, I had 2.125 tons per hour. Again, I beat that one ton per hour. The best one I did is this North Foundation. The North Foundation I is 42 tons, and it took me 14 hours. But I basically just did the uh, the the detailing on Series 97, and Angel or somebody is doing the drawing. But still, 42 tons. You know, I believe I had. Uh, I calculated about 14 tons. My hours and angel hours to drawing would amount to three tons per hour. So on all three, even the complex one, average more than one ton an hour. Our goal on this job is one ton an hour. And we're, I am averaging more than that. And I thought I'd demonstrate it to you. So. When you get a complex part, do not be overwhelmed by it. What you should do is make your job as small as possible by zooming into it. And do each one separately. And do each part in an order. For example, I did all the longitudinal first, then all the transverse, then put the, the step rings, then the standee. Then the wall dowels. That's done. Then I go another one wall. Then another wall. Another one. Next thing you know, you're done. The reason I'm so uh, concerned about this detailing is this is going on a fast track. They're already digging at the. They expect us to be out of the foundation right away. So I'd like to be able to submit a great portion of the foundation, at least on level zero, by the end of next week. That's why I thought I will demonstrate to you how I did it. So today, I did the complex portion, a portion of it for half a day. I hope you learned something from it. Thank you very much.